to look like and we're not quite sure what that is yet. It can be a bit worrying, it can be quite exciting, but time that is kind of full of mixed emotion. For the early church, they too were having to come to terms with how are we going to meet, how are we going to praise, how are we going to worship, because they were living in an environment that was forever changing. One of the things they did do, though, was put the Lord Jesus Christ right at the centre. They continued to meet, they continued to praise, and even though we're meeting at a distance this morning, it is so important that we put the Lord Jesus Christ at the centre, that we continue to meet even from afar, and we continue to praise. And so we start this morning by singing, Praise is Rising. Praise is rising, eyes are turning to you, we turn to you. John and for the disciples and all of the believers, it was a strange time for them as well. If you remember, we talked about Peter and John 
praying for the lame man and he started to walk. But that started a whole, what we would call, chain of events. Just like COVID-19 coming here started a whole chain of events. And what happened was the, the local leaders and authorities were saying to them, you must not come into the temple and speak about Jesus. You must not keep telling people about how he rose from the dead. In a sense, just as we've been told things like, you must not go and get too close to people. You must not go and mix with other people. And these things have to be done gradually. They were also being told, you must not. You must not do this. They were being threatened. And boys and girls, remember that some of the people that were threatening these believers were the same people who had had Jesus arrested and insisted that Jesus should go to the cross. So it must have been a pretty scary time for those early believers. So what did they do? Well, here's the thing. They go back after they've been threatened. They go back and they join in with all of the others, the other believers, and they tell them what had happened. Now, at this point, you might think that they started to pack up a little bag and clear off out of there as quick as they could. But in actual fact, that is not what they did. What they did is they started to pray together. And not just, Lord, please protect us. That's not what they were praying. They were saying, Lord, fill us again with your Holy Spirit that we can be bold for you that we can continue, that we can bounce back. Now, it's been quite some time since you were here in the church for Sunday school or for messy church or for youth group or all of the other activities. And as we come out of lockdown, we have to think about what we can do and more importantly, how we can do it. But know this, we will bounce back. For just as the Lord Jesus Christ bounced back from the grave, full of life, ready to continue, so will we. So we get to sing a song this morning to remind us that we will indeed bounce back just as Jesus had because he is the power and the source that keeps us going. So let's sing, you broke away from the grave. In other words, that song that has the chorus, we just want to praise. You broke away from the grave You came a new life you gave And so our voices we raise When we are weak you are strong you call us not to belong, and so we just want to praise. So we just want to praise. Yes, we just want to praise. For you have poured out your grace. We are so blessed in this place, and so we just want to praise. Lord is so for today, as we now follow your way, and so our voices we raise. You showed us how we should live, you showed us how to forgive, and so we just want to pray. And so we just want to pray. Yes, we just want to pray. For you have poured out your grace, we are so blessed in this place, and so we just want to pray. Yes, we just want to praise. For you have poured out your grace. We are so blessed in this place. And so we just want to praise. So we just want to praise. Yes, we just want to praise. For you have poured out your grace. We are so blessed in this place. And so we just want to praise.
continue with Acts and we're going to have a look at, pick up from where we left off, we're going to have a look at what happens next with the disciples. We've already talked about it a little bit with the children, but we're going to read it together now. We're going to go back to the book of Acts. Please read it with us. Today's reading comes from Acts 4, verses 23 to 31. The believers pray for boldness. As soon as Peter and John were set free, they returned to their group and told them what their chief priests and the elders had said. When the believers heard it, they all joined together in prayer to God. Master and creator of heaven, earth and sea, and all that is in them, by the means of the Holy Spirit, you spoke through our ancestor David, your servant. When he said, why are the Gentiles furious? Why did the people make their useless plots? The kings of the earth prepared themselves and the rulers met together against the Lord and his Messiah. For indeed, Herod and Pontius Pilate met together in this city with the Gentiles and the people of Israel against Jesus, your holy servant whom you made Messiah. They gathered to do everything that you, by your power and will, had already decided would happen. And now, Lord, take notice of the threats they have made and allow us, your servants, to speak your message with all boldness. Stretch out your hand to heal and grant the wonders and miracles may be performed through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. When they finished praying, the place where they were meeting was shaken. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to proclaim God's message with boldness. Amen. During the last three months of, of lockdown, it has been a strange time for every single one of us. The amount of people that I've met or spoken to and everybody saying the same thing. We've never known anything like this. This has been strange. And we have had a whole range of emotions during this time. And it's ranged from being a bit bewildered um, to being very, very frustrated. And the frustration comes from the fact that we no longer have control over our own lives. We can't just get in the car and do what we want. This kind of thing causes a great deal of frustration for us in a world where we have been used to having a great deal of freedom. <clears throat> for the early followers of Jesus who were facing the future with a great degree of uncertainty, they too must have had an amount of frustration. They have been in the habit of going to praise at the temple. Remember that when they healed the, the lame man, when they saw him being healed, they were at the gate of the temple. And now they have been given this very serious threat to tell them you're not to do that anymore. To tell them that you must Watch what you say. We're not interested in this Jesus. We don't want to hear about the resurrection. We don't want you coming around here. And if you like, teaching all of your new ideas. We don't want you upsetting the people. Although the crowds of people were embracing what they were saying, the authorities were not. <clears throat> and so the disciples are faced with the dilemma of, we have to move forward. We have to do what we were instructed by the Lord Jesus Christ to do. And as I said with the children, they go back to the believers and they start to pray. And I wanted to draw your attention this morning to the way that they pray. Because what they are doing, as they are praying before God, as the Holy Spirit will be guiding their prayers, is they are actually praying the words of a psalm. The psalms are there for us to read to in Scripture. Many were believed to have been written by David, the king that they always wanted, the king that seemed to protect them and help them to grow as a nation. And we know that many of them were used to worship. They were probably sung as praise and worship. And the Psalms there record the genuine feelings 
of the real people who are living at that time and their experience of God, if you like. And when you see the Psalms, they are so full of what I would call real life people and their thoughts and agendas. We probably would not, and I hope we would not, come before God and say, we want you to kill all of our enemies. Jesus has taught us something else, something called grace. But that's not what we're here to talk about today. But the Psalms are full of those kind of words, real human thoughts, as they are pouring out their hearts to God, either in a time of adversity or also in times of triumph and praise. And the psalm that they quote from as they come to pray is actually Psalm 2. And on Wednesday we'll pick up and have a little look at that psalm, but today we want to just look at that little bit that they are talking about and recognise what the Holy Spirit is doing in that room with them as they are praying and also recognise what is happening to them in their own hearts and minds. Because what the Holy Spirit is doing as they are reciting and praying this psalm is reminding them of all that God has done before. If this psalm was indeed written by David, then it's a good thousand years before the time that they were there in prayer together. And as a recognition that the fact that from the beginning of time, the earthly kings, the people who hold power and authority, the earthly empires, if you like, have always stood in the face of God. Always had an agenda to do things their way, not necessarily God's way. And that agenda is to take the people with them as well. And so when you get these earthly powers also aided and abetted by that power of evil, great damage can be done in communities and nations. And as they say the words of the psalm, that, look at that verse, the kings of the earth prepared themselves and the rulers met together against the Lord and his Messiah. Look at that psalm, because if that's written by David a thousand years before, as the, as the followers of Jesus acknowledge and say during that prayer, they have witnessed that verse coming to life. As King Herod conspires with the Roman authorities, with the Jewish religious authorities, which should be astounding, but perhaps not. And the power of evil brings all of these powers together to try and come against God and his Messiah. And as they are there praying, the Holy Spirit is reminding them that that didn't end well for the powers that be because Jesus rose again. He took on the power of evil, took it head on. And they could bring their worst, and they did, as evil and all of these earthly forces come together to get rid of the Messiah. But God was not finished. In fact, he was just beginning to bringing the new kingdom that the Messiah told us about. And as Jesus is risen from the dead, so the believers are recognizing that it doesn't matter what the threat is, the power of evil can do its worst because for whatever happens to Jesus, happens to us too. And there will be 
me life beyond. But for now, there is life right here. And so whilst the powers of evil that are still at work and lurking in our world, we're still trying to confound the message of the gospel. We're still trying to upset God's plans for the world. These disciples are there and they are recognizing that there is nothing that can come against them because the Holy Spirit is there to lift them and to move them forward. The power that brought Jesus back from the dead is the power that is going to help them. The authorities at that time were trying to prevent the early church, the early believers, from fulfilling their calling to be the witnesses that Jesus called them to be and from being the people that they were called to be as they lived for the Lord Jesus Christ, living God's way, living out the words of the, of the scriptures and the words that Jesus had taught them. The local authorities are trying to confound all of them. But as they meet, whatever fear they may have felt, as they are praying there, starts to disappear. And look what happens in that last verse as they pray that the Holy Spirit will come not to kill their enemies, but the Holy Spirit will come and help them to boldly go, if you like, into the future and could fulfill all that God has called them to do. They are asking for God to fill them with that boldness, to speak out, to fill them with that power to be able to see healing happen in Jesus' name that they will impact upon their local community. They are right at the cusp here, folks, because Luke's Gospel, for example, starts in the temple and it finishes in Jerusalem as well. Acts, if you like, starts in Jerusalem, and we've heard about them all going into the table to worship, but into the temple to worship, but you know what? Very soon they're going to have to move on and move outwards. And whereas some will stay where they are, others will move on to pasture, pastures new. We are going to have to move on. You know this? We have managed to do so much. When we went into lockdown, it would have appeared as if the, the forces of evil in our world were trying to frustrate all that God was doing. Our food project was still growing. We just started having a breakfast club here for children going to school. That was starting to take off and grow. We just started a little eco shop where we could come and refill our empties and, and not keep buying these single-use plastics. And we had so many plans as we were coming into 2020. And it would have appeared on the face of it as if COVID-19, almost as a, a power of evil, just frustrated all of that. Can I tell you that it hasn't? Can I tell you that the children that came here, we promised them that we would still take food round to them and we still do that? Can I tell you that all of the people that came to Lunch Club, it seems cruel, evil, that they can't come and meet anymore at the time, at this time. And yet, throughout this time, Wendy and her team, God bless you all, have taken lunches out to people in the community. And during this time, we have continued to pray, we have continued to worship. And even, sometimes I open my door 
and there's a little bag with empties on the doorstep so I can go and fill them for them and hand them in. I'm more than happy to do that. You just need to get in touch. So whilst we, we are having to worship at a distance, we now have to start asking the Holy Spirit to fill us in exactly the same way as he did for them as we face the future. Not sure exactly what it's going to be, but you know this, folks, already we need to start thinking about moving forward, just as the disciples in the early church were, moving forward into the future and starting to make plans. As God's people, I'm not talking about making a shopping list for going to Tesco's, I'm talking about our plans so that we can live as God's people just as the early church were planning to do. And we can't do that without the Holy Spirit. So that prayer that they were saying, remember that last verse, where they're asking the Holy Spirit to give them boldness, we too must boldly go to wherever God calls us to be. To be church in whatever way God calls us to do it. And we will. And we will. So let's call upon the Holy Spirit right now. Let us pray. Loving God, we thank you for your faithfulness to your people throughout the generations. We thank you, Lord, for the strength of the early church as they were not pushed from side to side, but as they prayed to you for boldness to move into the future. And we thank you that you responded again and again by sending your Holy Spirit to move in them and through them. And right now, Lord, wherever we are, wherever we sit, we ask that that Holy Spirit would indeed move upon us, that we too, our rooms, our bodies would shake with your presence, with your Spirit filling us that you would, Lord, drive out all of our doubt and fear and increase our faith as we move forward, just as your early church had to move forward. Lord, we pray for all of those who have struggled and suffered during this time. For those who have lost loved ones, Lord, hold them. Hold them, Lord, comfort them. Lord, for those who are sick and have struggled through this time, for those, Lord, who have been shut in for three months and are still facing isolation as well, how hard, how demoralising, how frustrating. Lord, we ask for your protection upon all of us, especially the most vulnerable, as we come slowly out of lockdown and help us to always be mindful help us to protect each other and those who are vulnerable help us to remember the things the lessons that we've learned during this lockdown and use them as we move into the future showing your love and compassion and consideration for one another Help us to be guided by your Spirit as we make the decisions that we need to make just as the early church did, but as we move forward with faith and your power and your guiding hand through your Spirit. Be with us and keep us. We ask in Jesus' name, who taught us when we pray to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever. Amen. We are going to close with a beautiful hymn. It reminds us that even when we come to that point of despair, that the Lord Jesus Christ can pull us back out. Beautiful hymn.
before the throne of God above. Let's close by singing it together. So now may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you evermore. Amen. <laughs>